December 7th, 2023. High above the calm tropical waters of the Caribbean Sea, an unexpected sight appears from out of the blue, soaring swiftly through puffy patches of clouds. Worlds apart from the tourist jetliners that typically traverse these serene skies, an American Lockheed AC-130J Ghost Rider zooms overhead. The sophisticated fifth-generation gunship carves its path through the sky, its four roaring Rolls-Royce turboprop engines shattering the tranquility that surrounds them. Suddenly, the noise intensifies as a rapid series of bellowing blasts ring out from its thunderous GAU-23A automatic 30mm cannon, the whole world seeming to shake with each shot fired. With footage of the incident from a full-motion infrared video camera posted online, apparently filmed from an unknown aircraft flying alongside the Ghost Rider, many were shocked to see such a fierce display of military might in this unlikely setting. The Lockheed AC-130J Ghost Rider shown in the video represents the latest evolution in the distinguished lineage of AC-130 gunships, a series renowned for their role in close air support, air interdiction, and armed reconnaissance missions. The development of the AC-130J was driven by the need for an updated platform that would extend the capabilities and service life of the AC-130 fleet, incorporating modern technology and enhanced firepower to meet contemporary operational demands. The AC-130J's primary role is that of a powerful airborne weapons platform. Air Force Special Operations Command officials have even characterized it as the ultimate combat aircraft. The Gatling-style 30mm GAU-23A cannon, seen in action in the video footage, is utilized for a variety of missions, including close air support, air interdiction, and force protection. It is particularly effective for precision strikes against ground targets, offering support to troops in contact with enemy forces. The cannon's high rate of fire and accuracy enable it to engage a wide range of targets, from personnel and light vehicles to fortified positions. Former First Special Operations Wing Commander Colonel Tom Polanski compared the GAU-23A to a sniper rifle, adding, quote, It's that precise. It can pretty much hit first shot, first kill. The Ghost Rider is also equipped with a 105mm howitzer, used for delivering heavier, high-explosive munitions over a longer range. It's capable of engaging more fortified or larger targets, making it ideal for destroying enemy bunkers, strong points, and concentrations of forces, as well as providing suppression and support for ground operations in more intense combat scenarios. What's more, the gunship includes an external BRU-61A rack that allows it to carry GBU-39 small-diameter bombs, known for their ability to accurately hit targets from a considerable distance with mineral collateral damage, as well as AGM-114 Hellfire missiles, which are versatile laser-precision-guided munitions useful for engaging high-value targets that require a more substantial warhead. The Ghost Rider is powered by four Rolls-Royce AE-2100 D3 turboprop engines, each capable of delivering 4,700 horsepower. This power plant not only propels the aircraft to speeds of up to 362 knots, or 416 miles per hour, but also ensures reliability and efficiency during extended missions. The aircraft's advanced two-pilot flight station with fully integrated digital avionics, coupled with its precise navigation systems, including dual inertial navigation systems and GPS, exemplifies the integration of cutting-edge technology into its design. Beginning its service history operating from Hurlburt Field, Florida, in February 2018, as part of the 73rd Special Operations Squadron, the Ghost Rider would participate in its first combat mission in Afghanistan in June of the following year. Since then, it has taken part in a range of operations around the globe, including a notable strike on an Iran-based militant group in November 2023, after said group launched a ballistic missile attack on U.S. and coalition forces in Al-Assad Air Base in Iraq. However, when the footage of the Ghost Rider unleashing a furious barrage of ammunition from its 30mm cannon was released the following month, few would have expected it to have been filmed over the Caribbean, an area in which U.S. military involvement has been minimal in the 21st century. Yet a long way from the laid-back luxury of the region's relaxing resorts, friction has been building between the neighboring nations of Venezuela and Guyana on the northern coast of South America. The source of the unease is Essequibo, a territory that makes up around two-thirds of Guyana's total area and is home to 125,000 of its 800,000 citizens, but is also claimed by Venezuela. The controversy traces back to colonial times, when the area west of the Essequibo River was contested by the Spanish and Dutch empires, with the territory later becoming part of what was then British Guyana. The heart of the current dispute lies in an 1899 arbitration award that allocated the contested land to British Guyana, 
a decision Venezuela claims was influenced by a biased Russian arbitrator favoring British interests. The issue remained relatively dormant for much of the 20th century, with occasional diplomatic flare-ups. However, the discovery of significant offshore oil reserves in Guyana in 2015 reignited tensions as Venezuela, facing economic and political crises, reasserted its claims over Essequibo, known in Venezuela as Guyana Essequiba. Efforts to resolve the dispute have involved various international actors and mechanisms, including the United Nations. In 2018, the UN referred the case to the International Court of Justice, a move Guyana welcomed but Venezuela criticized, insisting on bilateral negotiations instead. On December 3, 2023, the Venezuelan government held a consultative referendum seeking to validate its assertion over Essequibo and its rejection of the International Court of Justice. Official reports state that over 95% of participating Venezuelans responded yes to the five questions on the ballot, appearing to support the government's position. International analysts and media have suggested that turnout was much lower than claimed and the results were likely falsified. Nevertheless, the Venezuelan leadership used the purported outcome of the referendum to justify an intensification of its attempts to annex the disputed region. The day after the poll, National Bolivarian Armed Forces of Venezuela strategic commander Domingo Hernandez Lares posted a series of images and videos on his social media accounts of Venezuelan troops repairing or constructing new roads, bridges, airstrips, and other infrastructure along the border with Essequibo, with his accompanying texts suggesting that they were planning to expand into the region. On December 5th, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro declared that he was planning to allow the exploitation of natural resources within Essequibo, including gas, oil, and mineral deposits, as well as announcing the creation of local Essequibo subsidiaries of nationalized Venezuelan companies PDVSA and CVG, with focus on petroleum and industrial operations, respectively. Meanwhile, the same day, Brazilian President Lula said that he intended to make a presidential visit to Guyana the following year, which was interpreted by many as a coded warning that Brazil would not accept aggressive action from Venezuela. On December 6th, a Brazilian army source reported to CNN Brazil that an increased Venezuelan military presence had been seen building along the border with Guyana. Criticizing what he characterized as, quote, reckless and unpredictable, the Guyanese president, Irfan Ali, announced that he would be working with the United States Southern Command, which is asked to oversee contingency planning, operations, and security partnerships in Central and South America, as well as the Caribbean. Sure enough, the following day, U.S. Southern Command and the Guyana Defense Force launched joint military flight drills over the Southern Caribbean, including U.S. Special Operations Forces conducting freefall parachute jumps from an MC-130J Commando II Special Operations tanker transport. However, what really caught the commentators' attention was the unanticipated presence of the AC-130J Ghost Rider that day. Flights by any kind of AC-130 gunship had been few and far between in Latin America and the Caribbean. Indeed, a Ghost Rider flight off the coast of Panama the previous May represented the first time that a member of the AC-130 family had flown in that part of the world in over 10 years. Sharing the video of the Ghost Rider, pumping out shells from its 30mm cannon on social media platform X, Southern Command said that the purpose of the exercise was, quote, to stay sharp and agile in support of the joint force and partner nations. However, Southern Command spokespeople denied that the AC-130J had anything to do with the training activities involving Guyana's armed forces that day. Whatever the reason for the Ghost Rider's surprise appearance, it's interesting to consider this show of U.S. Special Operations aviation capabilities in the context of current events in the region. AC-130Js and MC-130Js would both undoubtedly prove vital tools were the United States to have to intervene in a conflict in the area, with the MC-130Js used to insert commandos in freefall jumps, allowing airfields and other landing zones to be opened up, while the AC-130Js provide cover. The MC-130Js can also provide assistance in evacuating military personnel from a danger zone. Meanwhile, the presence of American forces in the Southern Caribbean ruffled more than a few feathers in Venezuela. The country's defense minister, Vladimir Petrino Lopez, lambasted the United States' actions, labeling them a provocation, and saying that Venezuela would not be diverted from its future actions for the recovery of Essequibo. Throughout the following months, the situation has remained precarious, as videos have shown Venezuela continuing its buildup of military presence and construction of infrastructure near the border, while Guyana and its allies keep a watchful eye. Whatever may happen going forward, 
by releasing the footage of the AC-130J Ghost Rider gunship conducting live fire training in the Caribbean, the United States has sent a clear message to Venezuela that its aerial capabilities are not to be messed with.